kind of feel like, uh, I don't know, like we just keep doing this over and over again, um, Groundhog Day. But um, the one thing that stood out to me is talking about the sunshade, the dishwasher, the washer and dryer, you know, all these things that we talk about every time. And that is definitely where it feels like we just do the same thing over and over. And I don't know, um, I feel like I've been humored maybe. I don't know if you're, you know, when I speak with someone, just don't humor me, like let's get things fixed. I don't know if anyone at the shelter knows there's a guidelines for standard of care in animal shelters, but we sure, sure be using it. Um, just a couple of things there. And I have actually sent this link in an email to um, some of you, I think you have that, or I can send it again. But um, one thing in there is that it's unacceptable to use cages or crates intended for short-term confinement as primary enclosures. And when you have dogs in crates and they're not getting out maybe once for 15 minutes, then that would be their primary enclosure. Closures must allow animals to sit, sleep, and eat away from defecation and urination areas, and that is not happening. Indoor-outdoor access is ideal for most animals, and dogs should have the opportunity to hide within their enclosure. Housing should provide space, enrichment, and choice for long-term stays, and most of the dogs are long-term now because there are no adoptions happening right now. Things from that those guidelines are pain must be recognized and treated to alleviate suffering. Bonnie would have suffered. She already did suffer. Bonnie suffered at least one night or two, Paula. I'm not, I don't remember now. Or I'm sorry, Karen. Sorry. She was in there one night for sure. And was going to be left in there. Let's just put it that way. If we didn't have volunteers, I can't even imagine how bad it would be. I really can't because the volunteers really do everything those dogs need. <laughs> but to leave a dog that has her nose torn off would definitely um, not be called treating to alleviate suffering. That is not the same definition. Treatment protocols should be created by a veterinarian. We should have a veterinarian coming into the shelter. We do not have a veterinarian coming into the shelter. Frequent assessment of animals to determine pain relief should be happening, again, by a veterinarian. I know there's a staffing issue, although we have had a couple of issues with staff and a deputy dog warden that we've brought to attention and we haven't heard anything about yet. Um, and that is not something we'll let go. So we do need to know that something's happening about those incidents that we've brought to your attention. Even with the staffing shortage, um, I know on June 7th, I made efforts to in introduce a highly respected animal welfare professional who has been in sheltering for quite a long time, who is willing to consult under a contract for one year. And um, I know I've been told that, you know, we have to be careful meeting with her because it could potentially exclude her from putting in a bid, but she's not interested in putting in a bid. She's interested in helping the shelter get back on their feet and this is something that's not been taken serious in my opinion. Um, nobody's, I actually set up a meeting and wanted to come to the meeting and bring her with me. And I was told she could not come to the meeting. So that is not using resources that you've been given. Every, despite the support, the needs of the dogs appear to be consistently overlooked in the counting funding decisions. Um, so all the help that you're given is still not we just don't have the support in funding. Um, but we, the current status of a petition that I put out a few months ago is 3,009 signatures. And that those signatures have been collected for the petition of a new animal shelter. Now, I've been told a couple of times that we are not getting an animal shelter. Like, it's been very adamant that we're not getting one. But 3,009 so far, that's 3,009 people. And I know there's more than that in Claremont County, but we want a new animal shelter. The funds are going everywhere else on, these are, these are live animals. I don't think anyone realizes it. And I also wonder when we're so short staffed, why we don't have county employees volunteering at the shelter.
Um, and that's something else is that the animals, um, they, they need volunteers, as I said, but staff should also be cross-trained. Staff should be cross-trained. There are times I've walked in there and staff is, and I, staff is doing a great job, but desk staff are, seem bored, okay? But there's dogs in the back and maybe it's because they've not been trained to go in the back. Train them, cross-train. Uh, wardens need to be in the back. Everyone needs to be in the back. And especially at least one staff person at all times. That's a liability. Volunteers are in the back by themselves all the time. Usually it's because staff wants to have lunch together, but you need to stagger those lunches. Um, so, yeah, we have to look at the shelter because I know with holidays, you know, already the dogs are in the shelter overnight from, gosh, well, the shelter closes at four, but that's not, they don't get out at four. So they're already in for 17, 18 hours, but on a holiday, they're in longer. Okay. Well, consider the shelter like you would consider a nursing home. People in a nursing home don't leave the people and say, well, I'm sorry, it's Christmas. You know what you're getting into when you work with live animals. They need people there. So it's the, these are things that I really, um, I'm asking again um, for you to take more seriously, but we definitely won't stop here. Thank you.